Hi, this is Tamara from mooglyblog.com, and in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to crochet these crochet cord nesting bowls. It's a free pattern that you'll find on mooglyblog.com. If you go to the link in the description, you'll find both right and left-handed video tutorials, a link to the written pattern, as well as links to all the supplies you need. To make these bowls, you'll need Bernat macrame, and then a cotton yarn of your choice. Lily Sugar and Cream is great, that happens to be what I have on hand, but Bernat Handicrafter would also be excellent, or Red Heart Smoothie, if that's what you have on hand. You'll also need a crochet hook. I used a USH five millimeter, stitch markers and your usual crochet supplies, a yarn needle, and scissors are always handy. And then for this one, we'll also need a bit of glue. I like to use E6000 clear. It's nice and all purpose. It's also, however, very strong. And you could just as easily use a hot glue gun. Again, whatever you happen to have on hand in your craft room. So let's take a look at the finished bowls. Now here we can see the set of crochet cord nesting bowls. Now I made these a nice convenient size for me, but with this pattern, you could really go as big and as tall as you'd like. Just keep going up the sides to make it taller and keep expanding out in rounds to make it bigger. You'll see in the written pattern how all of these patterns start out the same. We start from the bottom up. And here we increase several rounds. For the bigger size, we just increase a couple more. And for the biggest size, we increase a couple more after that. I used very standard patterned rounds. You can see here where those increases are, the slightly darker lines. It's a little easier here to see in the colors rather than in the white. But this makes it very easy to continue increasing in pattern to make your bowls or baskets as big as you'd like them to be. Of course, if you go bigger, you will need a bit more yarn. And I've listed the amount of yarns for each of these individually in the written pattern as well. But again, we start from the bottom up and this would be the right size side. We're always working from the outside of the bowl and we work in spirals. And basically we're crocheting single crochet stitches right over the Bernat macrame cord. After we finished our increases, we work evenly up the sides for the height of our bowls. And as I say, you can easily adjust this for your own custom size. So let's go ahead and make one of these together. Now, one tip that I want to share with you when you're using Bernat macrame is that you take a piece of tape, either clear cellophane tape or masking tape, whatever you have handy, and wrap it around the end. As you can see here, it does start to fray, which is great in your macrame cord, but not necessarily what we want for this project. So I just take a small piece of tape and wrap it right around the end here, kind of like the aglet at the end of a shoestring. When it's time to finish our bowl, we can cut this little section off so it won't show. You won't have tape in your finished bowl, but it'll keep your cord from unraveling as we work. So it doesn't have to be anything fancy. We just wrap that right around there and get that end nice and secure, and that will hold it and keep it from fraying as we crochet. So when it's time to start crocheting your bowl, you're going to start with the colored yarn, the cotton yarn, the yarn that goes on the outside of the macrame cord. And the first round, we're just going to use this color. So what we want to do is we want to leave a really long tail. At the end, when we're assembling our bowl, we're going to use this long tail to secure that end of the cord itself. So we come in about a foot, approximately, you don't have to measure it out, but we want to leave a good length there. Then we're going to go ahead and make our magic circle. To do this, the way I do it, I wrap the yarn over my finger twice towards me. Then I insert my hook under both of those loops, pull the first one just under that one there, yarn over and chain one. And that sort of holds those two loops together. And then I continue to crochet into the ring. For round one, we're going to chain one. There we go. And make six single crochets into the circle. So to do that, I'm going to make sure that I go under both that ring around my finger and that tail end there. And then yarn over, oops, let me try that again. Get under both of those loops, get my hook turned around there, yarn over and pull up my loop and finish my single crochet. Once that in there, those rings are held together pretty well. I can pull my finger on out and continue to crochet around. Again, for a total of six single crochets, all worked into that ring. Just make sure that each stitch goes both into the circle and over that tail end so that we can pull it closed. Okay, so here we have one, two, three, four, five, six single crochets into that ring. 
So before I pull it closed, since we're going to be working in spirals here, I want to make sure to have a stitch marker on hand. And I'm going to mark the top of that very first single crochet that I made. This way, as I continue to work around my project in spirals, I will always know where my next round begins. Because with spirals, that can be really tricky. So once we've got that stitch marked, I'm going to go ahead and use my tail end here to close up that circle. I just give it a pull. You can see it pulls it nice and tight. So that's it for round one. Since we're working in spirals, we don't join with a slip stitch. What we do though, for round two though, is bring in our color B or our macrame cord. So let's talk through what we're going to be doing in round two. For round two, we're going to be laying color B, which is our macrame cord here, over A, our cotton yarn, so that we crochet over B and closing it in each stitch. And we're going to be working two single crochets in each stitch of the previous row all the way around. So we had six stitches in the first round. We want to have 12 stitches in the second round, two in each stitch, but make sure to enclose that cord. So how do we do that? Well, there's a couple different ways and however you wanna hold your hands to keep them comfortable is best for you. But I'm going to go ahead and insert my hook in that first stitch right there, that first marked stitch. And if you want to, since we know we're making our first stitch right now, we can go ahead and pull that stitch marker out of our way and set it aside. Now, with the uh, hook in there, this part's always a little tricky. What I want to do is lay color B basically over my hook. And I want to do this again a few inches in. We're going to coil up some of this cord and secure it with that 12 inch tail we left behind when we're finished with our, with our bowl here. But we wanna make sure that we have enough extra so that we can either peel this tape off or just cut off that section altogether. So I'd recommend you come in a couple of inches or so. And we're just going to lay that right over our hook. And you can see how that tail end is facing my hook hand. And then just sort of hold that down as best you can here while we find our tail end again, or not our tail, but rather our working yarn. We don't want the tail. There we have it, the working yarn, just take your time. There we go. And then I'm going to yarn over and pull that loop up through that stitch. And now you can see, and you can still adjust that, pull it maybe down a little bit more if you feel like you don't have enough length there, if it kind of scooted back on you. And now when we yarn over and finish that single crochet, we wanna pull those loops up so that they're on top of the cord here. We don't wanna work in front of the cord, we wanna work on top of it. But we just finished that single crochet and you can see that cord is now trapped inside. So let's do that again. We're going to go back into that same stitch. Remember, we're doing two single crochets in each stitch. So now when we yarn over, you can see with our working yarn, it's going to come behind that cord and closing it. And then we can pull up that loop. And again, pull it all the way up here to the top of the cord. You don't want to end up working in front of the cord. Everything is going to get really warped. You want to pull these stitches up nice and high. And then you can yarn over and finish that one. Now we've made two single crochets there. So before I get too much further, I don't want to lose track. So I'm going to go ahead and insert my stitch marker. There we are, in the top of that very first single crochet I made in this round. Missed one of the cord threads there. There we go, okay, so now that first stitch is marked, so I can continue on around for round two. So, we go to the next stitch. We just wanna make sure to keep that cord right on top of our work. Then when we yarn over, we enclose that cord right inside our work, pull that stitch up nice and high, and finish that single crochet. So it's trapped right in there. Then we go in again for a second one. Just pull that on through, there we go. And finish that one. And you can see now how that cord is really getting secure inside. Now you can still pull it. You've still got a little bit of play there. It's not easy. There's, um, it's not super slick. You know, we've got cotton yarn here and this is primarily cotton as well. So it isn't gonna be slippery, but if you need to adjust it at this point, this is your kind of your last chance to do so without pulling out your stitches. But you wanna make sure, like I say, that you've got enough of an end left here at the end so that we can sort of, we'll be doing it on the other side, but we'll be curling that over and securing that little bit down and cutting that little bit off. So just make sure you've got a few inches there, hanging out to the side, just let it hang there for now, don't worry about it, right along with that other tail, we'll take care of those later. But continue to work two single crochets in each stitch around, always make sure you enclose the macrame cord and that you pull those stitches up nice and high so that they're right on top of the cord and continue to work all the way around. So again, at the end of round two here, you should have 12 stitches, but remember we're working in a spiral, so we're not going to join with a slip stitch.
okay, so this is what your bowl should look like after round two. And that's for all the sizes you're making. They all start the same way. We've got our 12 stitches made. The next stitch you can see here is that marked stitch. We're not going to join to it though. But what we want to do now is continue working in that spiral around. So you want to make sure that 12 inch tail end and that little tail end of our cord hang loose there on the inside of our bowl. Again, we're working from the outside of our bowl. So all of this will be on the inside of the bowl. So let's come back here and get our fingers arranged so we can go ahead and begin round three together. So for round three, we're gonna continue just as we did before in closing the cord. We're going to do that from now all the way through the end of the bowl. But now we need to uh, change our increases a little bit to create that flat circle. So if you've crocheted circles before, you're probably very familiar with how this goes. Our re repeat for round three here will be one single crochet in the next stitch, two single crochets in the stitch after that. One, two, one, two, one, two, all the way around. So that again, we'll increase by six stitches for a total of 18. So let's go ahead and get started together. I'm going to go ahead and put my hook right in that first marked stitch there. And this stitch only gets one. But again, we wanna make sure to pull those loops up nice and high over that cord. I can't emphasize that enough. It's really important for this. Then we're gonna go ahead and move that stitch marker up so that I know this is the first stitch of round three. Put our hook right back in there. And then for our next stitch, we'll have two. So this is gonna seem pretty far over, but trust the pattern, it does work just as long as you're pulling those loops up nice and high to the top of your cord. So there's one and two in that stitch. So now we re begin our repeat again, one in the next stitch, two in the stitch after that, one and two. So if you find your bowl starting to curl already, because we are trying to make flat, uh, a flat circle here, the bottom of our bowl, then again, just make sure you're pulling those stitches up nice and high and that you're not making them too tight and causing that to pull in in any way. So let's do one more repeat here. One in the next stitch, two in the stitch after that, one and two. And then we just continue that all the way around until we have a total of 18 stitches in round three. So this is what your bowl should look like at the end of round three. You can really see our spiral here. If you look at that cord and how it just winds in upon itself, we've got our little tail end for our cord and our 12 inch tail of yarn here. So we can continue on with round four. You can see that very next stitch is our marked stitch. So round four, we're going to continue our increases right in pattern. We're going to work one single crochet in each of the next two stitches then two single crochets in the stitch after that. So that's our repeat. One, one, two, one, one, two, one, one, two, all the way around for a total of 24 stitches. So we'll go ahead and do the first couple here together. One stitch in that first stitch. Again, we're still working in our flat circle. We're still making increases. So we want to make doubly sure that we're pulling those stitches nice and high to the top of the cord. We'll want to do that when we're working even too but it's particularly important when we're working in our increases like this. So there's one, and I've marked that new first stitch of this round, one in the next stitch, and two in the stitch after that. And as you can see, once you get out of those little circles, it does become a lot easier to start making these stitches. So there was our first increase already, one, one, two. So let's do it again. One in the next stitch, one in the stitch after that, and two in the stitch of that after that. So there's one and two. So continue that on around here for round four until you have a total of 24 stitches. So this is what your bowl should look like after round four with 24 total stitches made. You can see here, I had two single crochets in the last stitch before my stitch marker. So now I know I'm definitely in the right place. And you can also start to see those darker lines where the increases line up. Again, this is something we'll continue throughout this pattern. So for round five, for the small bowl, this would be our final round of increases. For the larger bowls, you would just keep going after this one. But round five, we simply continue the increase pattern we've been doing before. Whereas in the previous row, it was one, one, two. Now it's one, 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 two. So 
three single crochets in each, one in each of the next three stitches and then two in the stitch after that. So one, 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 two, one, 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 two, one, 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 two, etc. all the way around until at the end of round five, we should have a total of 30 single crochets. Again, we're still going to continue working over our cord. We'll do that for the rest of the pattern. So let's do the first couple here together. We'll go into that first stitch and make our first single crochet. So there's one. And let's move that stitch marker right on up. There we go. So there's one and then one and then our third one and then two. We just line those increases right on top of each other. So then we begin again. One, 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 and two. One and two. So continue those repeats all the way around for a total of 30 single crochets in round five. So here's what your bowl should look like at the end of round five with a total of 30 single crochets in it. And you can see here, this is where I would stop increasing for the small bowl. For the medium and large bowls, you simply keep increasing in pattern. So whereas for round five, it was one, 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 two. Round six would be one, 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 two. Four of those lonely single crochets before our two single crochets. Then the next round, five before we have an increase. Then six before we have increase. Then seven, et cetera, et cetera. Just keep increasing the number of single crochets before that increase by one every round so that every round increases by six stitches. And you can really keep making, the, making these as big as you'd like. Of course, in the written instructions, I've gone all the way up through this large size, which has a six inch diameter, where I have written out the increases all the way through round nine. So after that, you can definitely see the pattern to keep going if that's what you want to do. But once you've got your increases done, then it's time to build up our sides of our bowls. So after you've made your bowl the size you want in terms of its width and diameter, then it's time to work evenly up the sides to create the sides of our bowl. For each of these bowls, I did five rounds worked even, but again, you can make these sides as tall or as short as you like, and definitely custom make them for your project and what you want to put inside your bowls. So to work even, we're simply going to work one single crochet in each stitch around. No more having to count them out and put two single crochets in a particular stitch, we're just going to work all the way around. So we still want to pull up our stitches to the top of our cord here. We don't want to start getting real cramped with them, but now that we've got our flat circle established, everything should flow beautifully. I am still also going to move that stitch marker up to the first stitch of the row because we still want to keep track of what row we're on. So after that, it's simply a single crochet in each row around. And as you come around and move that stitch marker up for the first row of the next round and keep going around, since you're working even, you won't be increasing that flat circle anymore. You should start to come in on the sides. If you find that for some reason your bowl isn't coming in on the sides after the first couple rounds, because after the first one here, it just barely starts to come in. You've got to give it a few to really see it. But if you find that that's the case, then go ahead and try and work those single crochets a little bit, a little bit tighter. It might be that you are just particularly loose in your single crochets. But in general, those sides should keep coming up really beautifully as long as you aren't increasing and you're just working one single crochet in each of these stitches. You can see here, I'm almost halfway around, which I can tell thanks to my stitch marker there. And it is definitely starting, I just wanna show you, it is definitely starting to curl a little bit here because it's starting to curl towards me. I actually want the basket to go this way, but of course you can flip it out when you're done, crochet it this way, whatever's most comfortable for you and your hands as you're crocheting. This will be the final form of the basket with these sides worked from the outside. But if it flips towards you as you're crocheting, not a big deal. We'll just pull it out and turn it right side out when we're all done. So you can see how, again, this is really starting to curve in already here, but I am still pulling those loops up to the top. So just continue to work evenly around for six rounds or again, whatever height you want your bowl to be. And then I will see you when we're ready to finish off our nesting bowls. Now I haven't worked the full six rounds of sides for this bowl, but I'm going to stop here so that it's a little easier to see on the inside as I finish that off. And I also think this size would make a great little bowl for my stitch markers and notions. So I'm going to go ahead and stop here. So how am I going to go ahead and finish this off? What I want to do is I want to cut both of these yarns 
And then I'm going to use this yarn to secure this end. So you can see I've worked right up to that stitch marker. And if you want to, I like to do this and it's totally optional. I'm gonna go right into that first stitch and just go ahead and put a slip stitch right there. And I'm working that one really tight. I don't know if you guys can see that there. I am really pinning down that end of the cord right there. So with that done, I'm going to go ahead and grab my scissors here. And again, I want to leave a nice tail here, about 12 inches or so with that yarn. I'm not gonna measure it, just gonna eyeball it. There we go. So then I can set that one aside. And then with my cord, I'm not going to need nearly as much length, but I want to make sure that I have my glue ready because I want to cut this off relatively close and then use this tail end, whoops, this tail end rather, to secure it down with my yarn needle. There it is. So we've got a couple of moves going on here. First thing to do first, let's remove this stitch marker and get it out of the way so it doesn't get any, doesn't get glued into our project. I wanna make sure these are out of the way so they don't get mixed up in there. And then I'm going to have my glue handy. Again, you can use hot glue. I like to use E6000, the clear one. That's important. Don't get the one with color. You'll see it in your finished project. Um, it's just a great all-purpose glue. But again, whatever glue you happen to have on hand. Fabric glue, glue might also work well, but whatever works for you. So we'll get the glue ready here, and then we will cut off our end. All right, I've got the end off my glue here ready to go, so we need to move a little bit quickly here. I'm going to go ahead and just pull up with that yarn and get my hook out of the way here and that little tail end there is secured with that slip stitch. And I'm going to go ahead and cut this off really close to my project. You can see that wants to fray, fray rather right away. So this is where we just wanna go ahead and dab it as soon as we can here with our glue. We're just gonna get a little bit right there on the end so that it doesn't want to fray up on us. There we are. So then I wanna get my lid back on that right away. There we go. And now you can see I've got that little bit of glue right there on the end of my macrame cord. And I'm just going to use my yarn needle to sort of dab that in a little bit because I can clean that off later. Same with my hands. It's one of the reasons I'm not wearing my jewelry today. I didn't want to get any glue on any of my jewelry. So I'll just dab that in there. And then I can wipe that off with a cloth or a paper towel. And then what I'm going to do is take that end of my yarn here, our final end, not the middle one. We wanna make sure we've got the one that's up here, not the one down at the beginning. And then, as I say, we're just going to secure that end of our cord. I'm just going to do it by sewing it right down into that first stitch. So there we go. And go ahead and tighten that up really nice and tight. And then we just wanna to continue to work over that edge. So you can sort of line your yarn right over that cord there. Use your fingers to sort of Line it up before you pull it down and just do a few different passes here. You can go on to the next stitch if you need to, to really secure it, whatever is working for your cord and the length you ended up happening to cut it off at. And then as we get down here, this will dry clear and nice. And we'll just sort of get that finagled right in there. And then like I say, just cover up just as much of that end with your yarn as you can here. Let's do, I think, one more on this little guy here. I just wanna line that right up with the end there. I think that looks great. So then I want to go ahead and send this around one more time so I can start weaving it in. So find some stitches here. And then, of course, you can weave in that end as you normally would. There we are. So just pull that nice and tight. And then we're going to go ahead and let that air dry. And we've got a nice finished edge right there. So that just leaves the inside of our bowl at the beginning that we need to tack down. Okay, so I tucked away that first end so we can see the inside here really clearly. Here we've got our beginning end of our cord and the beginning tail of our yarn. So I'm not going to cut that, uh, cut that one off just yet. First, I want to sort of secure it down in a circle. I'll show you here what I mean. I'm going to put that tail end there on my yarn needle. And then I'm going to go ahead and actually turn this wrong side out so it's even a little bit easier to see. So this would be the inside of our bowl. We were working from that side. Now it's the inside. I've just flipped it wrong side out. And then what I want to do is I want to sort of lay this end of the cord over that first round where we didn't work over the cord at all, where we were only working with our yarn, just to help tack it down. So we can see how we kind of complete the spiral here, but we're going to be using this tail end to do it. So you can simply go right into those stitches and sort of work your way right around that circle a little bit. Come out from the middle 
and just tack it right down. There's no right or wrong. You know, you can't really miss a stitch here. You just get it down until you have it where you like it and where it feels secure. And like the bottom of your bowl there is complete. So I do pull these down relatively tightly, especially as I work my way around here. And that is probably about as much length as I want to keep on this right there. So you can see on the inside of our bowl now, it's pretty well tacked down. I don't really like that big space there. So let's go ahead and just put another one right there just to make it look really nice from the inside of our bowl as well. And now if I come right back up through that middle one more time, I'm ready to trim this off. I don't wanna take this off my yarn end just yet. I still wanna secure that down like I did up at the top, but now we're ready to trim. So we need to pull up our glue again and get it ready and our scissors. Okay, so now we're ready to trim off that inside cord of our bowl. So again, we wanna get it close, not too close, leave a little bit of space there. Go ahead and just cut that right on off. Have our glue at the ready. Sort of, I like to just sort of pinch it together there so it's a little closer. Then I put that glue right on that end. Again, whatever glue you like to use for these sorts of projects is fine. Then I will use that yarn needle again to sort of just spread that over the end there. Yarn needles, um, particularly this kind, are metal, so they're very washable, even with this kind of glue. So just get that wrapped in there a little bit, secure that end, and then we're just going to sew right over it just as we did at the top. Just sort of use your hands to line that up so we can really tack down that tail end. Again, you wanna make sure whatever glue you are using that it does dry clear. There we are. So then we've got sort of one last little section there. I want to pull down with the yarn. Maybe do one more for those little bits there. Again, this is sort of eyeball it. Every project's gonna be slightly different when you're tacking down these ends. There we go. I like the way that looks. I think that's gonna look really nice. You can see on the outside of my bowl, since that first round was all with this color anyway, it's fine. We just wanna send that end to the inside of the bowl one last time before we weave in this final end. Then of course, let this uh, center of the bowl here air dry just as you do on the outside and your bowl will be ready to use in just a few minutes. So here's one more look at that finished inside edge. You can see how I just wound it down right on top of that first round and used that tail end to tuck it in. Then of course, it's time to turn our bowl back right side out. See, there's our nice secured end there. And we have one very small little ring bowl or notions bowl. And of course, you can use this pattern to make them in all sorts of sizes. And that's how to make the crochet cord nesting bowls, a free pattern you'll find on mooglyblog.com. Once again, please go to the link in the description for links to the written pattern and all the supplies you need. Thanks so much for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.